Hey guys, welcome back to Gran Turismo 7. We are looking at the Corvette Stingray Convertible here in 1969. I think it looks pretty cool, actually. I really like this car. And uh, its performance points are now at 579 because I went to the racing section of parts and put in a supercharger and it boosted it like crazy. Among other sports parts I added to it because its performance points originally were not that great. But we are doing a cafe menu that is collecting Mustangs. So let's go ahead and... Get it done! Blue Moon Bay Speedway. Seemed pretty simple of an oval. Yeah, it is a basically an oval. So let's see how fast that supercharger helps things out here. Already climbing up on them, that's good. Although we gotta remember to turn appropriately. Oh yeah, it's super responsive. Just the description said that it's almost instant response time when you press the accelerator. Already in fifth or sixth place now. I think it's no question we're gonna win this thing. I like a good oval track, you know? Just something about hugging the inside line. Let's see what other camera angles we got here. Hey, look at that, there was a Challenger. Why wasn't it listed in the showroom? That's weird. Jeez, I think I just hit the wall. Yeah, I'm not a fan of the third-person camera of this game. It looks very sloppy and, like, unanimated. I'm slowly noticing stuff where, like, I remember the trailers of this game looked amazing. And it still does look... the parts that matter look great. But, like, if you ever try to take a good look at the people in the stands, it kind of looks like GameCube era. <laughs> Hey, this guy, he was the training instructor for getting the B license. Can we beat him into the lap? Nah, I think we were second technically when we crossed the line. That sucks. It doesn't matter though, because we're still going to win. The engine actually sounds really cool when it's going full speed like that. I want a track where you could just top off. Like, there's got to be a... Almost like a drag race type track. That would be cool. It's hard not to be like that episode of the Rugrats, you know, where Tommy Pickles was pretending like he was in a race car and being like, making all the noises. <laughs> so stupid. Well, there we go. Definitely could feel the, the tune-ups that I did in that little section of the game. Because I think the base performance points was like 300 something originally it's a clean race bonus and that gave us the Mustang boss 429.69 level up collection level 8 hey we got a new helmet hey, that one actually looks better than the one we got there's like three separate menus you gotta get to to edit that stuff. Let's watch the replay for a little bit. Get a good angle of the car, you know? My uncle didn't have a Stingray, but he had a... Chevelle. It was cherry red, too. Oh wow, that was a terrible turn. <laughs> The racing helmet almost looks out of place 
in a way. When it's not an actual, like, Formula One car, you know? But maybe I'm just stupid. Alright, let's get the next one. Willow Springs? No, wait, WeatherTech. Let's do this one. Suggested 550. That's why I did all the tune-ups I did. Mustang 71. Nice old-style looking one. That looks kind of cool, actually. I like the older looking stuff. I found the DeLorean is in here. It's like 500 something thousand credits if I want to purchase a DeLorean outright, and I was thinking about it. But instead, I was messing around with a Corolla. It was like the Corolla 11 or something. It had that old 80s style look to it. I changed up the rims of the tires. Get out of the way, chum! But yeah, I don't know, it's kind of fun messing around in the little tune-up shop. Just picking options, especially when the game gave you a million credits as an apology for having servers that were not available or something. I think that's the only reason why I was able to purchase so many parts. But I am being a little bit frugal about it. Frugal, that word was. It kind of came out as a million syllables. Superbird. That thing looks weird. Like, why do you need a spoiler that huge? <laughs> Alright, get out of the way. Felix, coming for you. Gotta say it, at least once in a racing game. So how you guys doing today anyway? I myself just bought a mattress and a box spring. It's coming in about a week. Gotta get the place all freshened up for people coming over. It's a rare thing that happens, you know, so we gotta make sure everything's looking nice. It's about time for a new bed, man. Mine creaks like crazy. But I remember riding in my uncle's Chevelle. We went to Burger King. <laughs> That's all I remember. I was really little. But back when they were my age, which is kind of crazy to think about, my uncle was a big car guy. And he used to always make fun of my dad. He called them Bill's cars, because my dad's name is also Bill. And I guess... My dad had a Firebird at one point when he was younger, but that was way before I came around. But ever since that car, he also had a motorcycle or something, but ever since then, he pretty much bought cars that always had problems with them, and so my uncle always made fun of him for it. I don't really have too many memories of my uncle like that. But that's just one thing that always stands out, is that he had a Chevelle, and it was... He always had it looking nice, too. Like he was very strict about it. 10,000 credits. I will take them. A daily workout ticket. It always looks like it's gonna give you a car when it spins that roulette. But then it always ends up being, like, the cheapest possible reward. The money. Yeah, see, I kind of like, well, the back kind of looks a little stupid, but I like the boxy look from, like, the 60s and the 70s. But there is something neat about cars from the 80s, too, that kind of just look like crap. 
Willow Springs, let's do it. It's a modern Mustang we're getting for this one. 2015. This track's kind of sweet, man. Hot air balloons in the desert. I guess it was Arizona or something that we uh, picked on the map. What's stopping you from joyriding out in the desert? I guess your tires or something. But see, that's the thing. From what I hear, Forza tends to do this kind of stuff a little bit better, but it depends on what you're after. I guess Gran Turismo is more about the realism and car history or something, whereas Forza is kind of more like a video game and you can kind of go off-road and do whatever you want. Any game that features cars, it is fun to kind of just goof around. Go for huge jumps off of random hills and stuff. This guy's always out in front. Who the heck is he? He's a real dude, too. I think they are real people. to 140 there. This is a cool track. I like the aesthetic of it, the sunset and everything. Yeah, the people almost look 2D on the sidelines there. They might just as well be, you never know. Wow, you can even see the moon, that's crazy. out a little bit. Hear those tires squealing. This is that kind of time of day where it gets hard to see stuff. Because your headlights aren't yet capable of being helpful. But there's not enough daylight to be helpful either. Twilight. There we go. We got the three Mustangs for the cafe ticket I was working on, or the menu, whatever it is. I'm curious to see the default score or performance points of this one. I don't know. Modern Mustangs or old ones? Which is better? I think almost always the old stuff wins. But that could just be a weird bias. It's definitely a cool looking car, man. Just wanted to see it in the sunset for a bit. So let's head back to the cafe and see what the next thing is. I've been playing a little bit off screen on my own time. Just, I kind of record it when I feel like it's something that I could do. Like we're collecting three cars, okay. Easter Island statues. Is that Easter Island? So I guess we get to learn about the Mustang now. Daytona, I was there once. 
Well, the beach, anyway. I don't know if it was during, like, the whole biker week, though, but I remember there was something going on. You can't talk about it more American sports cars without mentioning the Ford Mustang. The first-generation Mustangs introduced in 1964 occupy a very special place in automotive history. The car was unveiled at the World's Fair in New York, and 100,000 orders were placed within a month. It was a relatively small two-door sports car that came with the choice of either a V6 or a V8 power plant. The Boss 429 was built to compete in NASCAR races. GT350 was developed in collaboration with esteemed American race driver Carroll Shelby. There aren't many cars that boast more than half a century of history. That's what makes the Ford Mustang the quintessential American pony car. Pony car, that just sounds weird. Oh, now we're on to the Camaros. You want to bet the fate of the world on the boys' Camaro? All right. Yeah, we can kind of mess around with it, I guess. I might just get these on my own time, though. Because I'm just going to be using this car again. And I'm sure we want to vary it up a little bit. All right, I just unlocked this Camaro here. It's one of the newer ones. It was the bottom one on the menu. It actually looks pretty sweet. The ZL1 2018. So, let's go do the Daytona thing because I did the other ones and this is brand new. 69Z28 is the reward for this one. Daytona is literally just an oval. I'm curious about this. The interiors of modern cars are pretty sweet, though. Oh man, if this is all this is, that's awesome. Get out of the way, dude. Jeez. Trying to pin me to the wall there. This thing is ridiculous. It's also because there's no brakes needed, which is amazing. Two hundred mile per hour club. Yeah, interior is better. This track is my new favorite. Because you don't ever have to slow down. But yeah, it literally had me doing all the other courses that I just did in the uh, the Stingray convertible. So I just did them again and got the Camaros, and then this one was new, so I figured we'd do this. This car, by default, has crazy performance points. I didn't do a thing to it, and it's already amazing. For this stage of the game, I'm sure. Hey, fireworks. The dashboard like, smartphone app thing there. That almost looks like just a still picture that was lazily placed there. Are we lapping these guys? Jeez. That track was cool. Very short, very fast. I like that, I think, more so than the everything else so far. That'd be an easy way if it gives you that many credits every time. 
be an easy way to kind of grind for them. And there we go, the Camaro menu is now complete. I'm glad I didn't get a white one. Like, I think the color choice that it gave me for the one I was just racing is uh, ideal. It almost looks like the rims have a little bit of hint of red on them, which I think goes well with the silver. Notice the Ferris wheel. Pretty cool Camaro, though. Do you guys prefer black wheels? Or the traditional silver that most things come with? I guess that could be car dependent, too. Yeah, that dashboard just looks out of place. I don't know. Just the stereo part of it, anyway. Anyway, I was just getting mesmerized by the sounds. So now we'll see what the next cafe menu is, but probably not do it this video, because... Well, it's kind of more of the same stuff. Oh yeah, we get to learn about the Camaros now, too. It's like Ford versus Chevy, isn't there that whole, whole thing? I don't have a side on either coin of it or whatever the phrase there is. Chevrolet is one of General Motors' most storied brands. Its legendary Camaro sports car first appeared in 1967. It was created to take on the popular Mustang, which was produced by rival Ford. There you go. Along with the Mustang, the Camaro shined in the Trans Am series during the 1960s. In fact, the first generation Z28 Camaro was fitted with an engine specifically designed for Trans Am competition. The fifth generation Camaro appeared in 2006 and became very popular after appearing in Transformers, basically. The sixth generation ZL1 made waves after posting a something lap time that was worthy of a supercar. And this, and a loyal following, has made the Camaro a sought-after collector's car today. Yeah, that one was pretty fast, man. Take a photo of your car. Well, I'll just do that on my own time. So thanks for watching, you guys. Hope that you enjoyed these little one-offs. Take care.